I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on Data Engineering. In this episode, we're going back to our Microsoft Access playlist, and we're going to take a look at uh, Azure SQL again, and we're going to start talking about some further topics on how to use Azure SQL as your database backend. Uh, but before we get to those videos, I wanted to do a discussion about why we use uh, ODBC with, with Azure SQL, but also um, how awesome DAO is with ODBC and Azure SQL altogether. And so without further ado, let's get to our Azure SQL backend. Okay guys, so before I get any further on our Azure videos, um, connecting Microsoft Access to Azure, um, I think it'd be really important to to do sort of an a introduction to ODBC um, and DAO on ODBC um, so that you guys can really understand uh, why you're going to move, first of all, your data onto Azure and use ODBC, but also the awesomeness that is, you know, using Azure as a database on the back end. See, ODBC is everywhere. Applications everywhere use only a few methods of connectivity uh, to connect to databases unless you're making a massive application that where you created your own API and stuff like that to, to get data. Um, generally speaking, uh, there's only a few uh, database connectivity sort of methods that have been around for, most of them have been around for decades. Um, you know, a newer one like ADO.net, that's, you know, 20 years old. Um, there's JDBC, which is for Java, and ODBC is the one that is mainly for Windows environments. And those are all among the few uh, methods that are available amongst all databases. And even if you think you're using some tool, like some fancy ETL tool, uh, with all kinds of gadgets on it and stuff, you're still probably using ODBC if you're in a Windows environment. And in the Microsoft environment, ADO.NET and the related SQL client is really great, and I show some of that in my other videos, uh, but it isn't really tailored for use with technology like Microsoft Access. And uh, JDBC is really for Java, so it doesn't work, and there are some others too, but ODBC is kind of like the lingua franca of the database world when you use the Windows environment. So if you want to connect to Oracle or, or DB2 or even SQLite or, or any, any kind of database that you can think of, you can use ODBC to get there. And let me tell you, ODBC is really, really good at what it does. Um, you can connect to almost every kind of database system on the planet with ODBC. So even if you're using, you're already using ODBC, uh, please take a step back and ask yourself, have I really explored what this is that I'm using? Or did I just throw my tables and queries in there and made it work and, and I was happy with that? You know, if you did that, you, you're probably okay, but you know, you could ask yourself, you know, could it be better? Well, it can. Take a deep breath because this is where your Microsoft Access world can get really freaking cool. If you already created your database, as I showed you in the previous episodes on Azure, you're on the right path. Now you have two technologies that are going to rock your world compared to where you were before, ODBC and an Azure SQL database. Azure SQL databases are extremely powerful for your uh, backend database, and this is important. Many of the bottlenecks you had in your Access database before are going to be resolved in an elegant fashion uh, between ODBC and Azure SQL. As an Access developer, what do you need to learn? Well, first, you need to learn that you really want some of your processing or your queries to be migrated to Azure SQL. Why? The reason is, is that Azure SQL will take the place of, you know, that query 
in your code so it will be faster and you can just link to that view as a link table and none of your code will change but you will get all of the benefit of having this uh, superpower backend database. The second thing you need to learn is you need to learn how far you can push ODBC with your own nested queries in your access front end. Now ODBC will actually translate most single level queries and then execute them natively on the server which is faster but as soon as you start having these uh, nested queries on queries type of scenarios, ODBC will start to you know, just retrieve the subsets that will be needed and then those will be returned and then the uh, JET or ACE environment will uh, do the work on those queries which is slower than if you actually moved everything to the back end. You don't have to change your super nested query if that's what works for you. I mean you can really just move migrate the whole thing to Azure SQL and then link just the result set out and that will be way faster than if you leave it in access. So you should start to look at your queries critically. If you have five queries that are really only used to feed one big query like I just explained uh, in your app and you know only the big query is used then move all of those queries into, into Azure SQL and link only the, uh, your app to the big query. Now in my upcoming Azure SQL videos uh, with Access, I'm going to show you how to do these operations so that you can get the maximum benefit from using Azure SQL. When you see just how much better it is, it's going to blow your mind. When I first scaled up a client to an Azure SQL backend this way, I could not believe how good it was compared to the native access tables. Don't get me wrong, access is really awesome on just on its own, but when you learn to scale things, it can really be an eye opener. And the fact that I had to change almost nothing in the design of the application made it even better when I migrated. So moving on to DAO on ODBC, now DAO is the data access objects that's sort of like the native uh, you know, way that you look at tables and queries and how they work inside of access. Um, and you know, the next part of this magic is to talk about how awesome DAO is when it's on ODBC because they are almost seamless. Um, you know, DAO includes linked tables and you know DAO includes a whole bunch of stuff but it includes linked tables that you can use in your application and it operates on linked tables seamlessly especially on Microsoft databases like Azure SQL I mean it is so uh, tightly integrated um, the way that they work and if you use the methods I showed you in my previous video um, I'll display the card up above here um, if you uh, create your tables in the way that uh, access you know is generally very good at using those kind of tables you know with auto numbers and those kinds of things as your keys then uh, the integration is even better well what does this mean well it means you can design your databases in the same familiar way uh, that you know, to how you designed them before uh, using native access tables um, and if you're using the right design methods, you can migrate your entire application and code base to use Azure SQL with very minimal changes. DAO is really cool, it's mature, it's stable, and it's awesome when you use it um, in your Access applications. And you know, you might ask, well, what is the alternative? Uh, well, the al alternative is ADO. ActiveX data objects, which is part of ADODB and is also pretty cool data tech uh, that you can use with your Microsoft Access database. But you know it has many proponents, especially from the VB6 world, uh, since this is generally how VB6 apps were designed using ADODB. Um, but note that both of these use ODBC as as their you know as the technology connecting to um, SQL Server, just in a different way. And some people will insist on using ADO once you make the jump to Azure SQL, but my advice is do not do it. 
you will just cause yourself massive headaches uh, when you could have your app up and running much faster using DAO. Uh, ADO has a place and generally speaking that is for other types of applications. Uh, but when you're using Access, you've got this, this beautiful built-in integration between D, with DAO and ODBC and, and S, Azure SQL uh, on the back end. Uh, my advice is uh, use that. So really take a look at ODBC uh, so that you understand you know, what it is and what it does. And then stay tuned to see my next few videos on how to do things like migrating dense queries to the Azure SQL backend. Once you really understand how all of that works, you're going to take your Microsoft Access application to the next level. Are you a developer looking for your next gig? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description.